ok? É, we will start this evening of, uh, with a uh, art uh, focus, you can say. Uh, and so I welcome you to this lecture in Swinglish. Uh, <coughs> uh, <laughs> and I call my presentation Martinus the Symbol Painter, or the art of giving a concentrated visual overview of the cosmic structure of the universe. Uh, so, my main focus will be on Martinus in his role as a drawer or a painter of symbols, and not so much on explanations and the content of the symbols. I think I have to change side because your ring is making noise on ah, the microphone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. The, that ring I, I have had, I, I think, in 45 years or something, and I haven't uh, been able to get it out of my ear, <laughs> even when I tried. So it, ha the, it will be there. Uh, okay. It was not my earring we were talking about tonight. Uh, <coughs> but uh, so I said that the main focus will be will not be on the, the content of the symbols, but I will merely discuss them in the context of art and uh, also relate them to classical spiritual images. Uh, in all, Martinus drew uh, 100 symbols over the years. Uh, and in uh, <coughs> uh, his first uh, series of symbols were created under primitive conditions on a plain table so small that uh, the paper was hanging over the table borders. And uh, <coughs> he used simple means like pen, ruler, compass, and paint. And I think in the earlier years uh, he did not even use a compass uh, to draw circles, but uh, a needle attached to a thread and a pen. Uh, he realized early on that uh, it would be a, of great help for the recipients to, uh, if there were symbols accompanying the theoretical analysis. Uh, <coughs> so uh, in the beginning, it was a huge challenge for him uh, to find the proper words and uh, symbolic characteristics that would make the invisible conditions of his word picture uh, yeah, of his word picture clear to the readers um, as he of course was aware that the modern human being to a high extent is focused on concrete physical things and events um, <coughs> Okay. Uh, he worked a long time to make his, sim his main symbol, uh, number 11, right. Uh, and after many uh, versions, he finally got the approval from the Providence and uh, sensed two beings standing beside him, nodding and then vanish. Uh, in the book uh, Martinus vi husker ham, uh, Martinus as we know him, it's a book I think is not uh, uh, 
translated yet to English. <coughs> but in this book, uh, an, an, a former co-worker to uh, Martinus uh, remembers him uh, saying uh, something that I had to translate uh, as, as, it, as it isn't translated yet, so it might not be correct to 100%, but he said, all knowledge in the universe exists and manifests in the sea of wisdom. For every cosmic being to have ex ac access to, my specific abilities, he said, consists of not only that I can get in contact with this sea of wisdom, but that I also can transform this knowledge that I need to the area where the concepts exist. And from there, I thus again can formulate these concepts in words and symbols to make them understandable for human beings. Uh, the symbols thus are intended as a kind of metaphysical maps uh, over our inner invisible cosmic terrains. Uh, such spiritual psychological maps Martinus considers to be in indispensable when figuring out our location along our personal spiritual path. Uh, so the, through the help of these maps, we can work with ourselves uh, in the divine transformation uh, from animal to a real human being. Uh, this is a, a map from over the um, <coughs> uh, Mediterranean, uh, a Mediterranean area from 1492. I just thought it was a kind of beautiful old map, but a physical one, a physical, physical area. Yeah. To Martinus, the purpose of his symbols were clearly related to faci facilitating the understanding of his analysis. Uh, yet, uh, at least I can hardly avoid associating to art and aesthetics when looking at the often very beautiful symbols. We can see some of them here. Beautiful things. But Martinus also did other aesthetic work, as we can see in this painting, dated to 1912, taken from Kurt Christiansen's biography on Martinus. Uh, and this is just around the time he got his permanent cosmic consciousness, I think, 19, which should be 1911, as it, it is, uh, uh, hundred years ago. No, wait, wait a minute. It was, it w uh, of course, it was ten years before. Yeah. Yes. So, and that uh, makes sense because <coughs> uh, after his cosmic consciousness, he got his cons cosmic consciousness. He he didn't have time, I think, to to paint uh, these kind of of paintings. Uh, I don't know, but I've heard that he, he sometimes, when he painted, he painted covers from other painters' uh, uh, paintings, but he also did some of his own. And you can clearly see that he has uh, artistic and, and aesthetic uh, talent and sense. So, are the symbols art? Uh, <coughs> Imagine someone not being familiar with Martinez's writings who sees his symbols in an art gallery, which of course is not going to happen. But I think that person would associate it with a kind of abstract art. Uh, 
H here we can see, uh, yes, of course. This is an uh, art work, uh, an abstract art piece by the French painter Robert Delaunay from 1914. Uh, such strivings yet uh, stands in opposition to, um, <coughs> uh, oh, I didn't say that. Abstract painters have a conscious striving for the non-objective and non-imaginative, so that the viewers should be able to interpret the artwork in uh, their own way. And that is not what Martinez intended, because uh, his intentions were that this, his symbolic drawings uh, were to help us imagine and understand spiritual, non-visible conditions and structures. Uh, so, um, if looking at this symbol, we can see similarities, of course. Uh, the, the symbol number 14, the cosmic spiral cycle. Uh, so there is a fundamental difference in purpose. Uh, here is another quote from Martinus. In order to understand properly my form of illustration, it must be borne in mind that the mental or cosmic realities expressed by my pictures have no uh, material or physical form, but are identical with cosmic universal laws, fundamental principles, ideas, causes, and methods of sensing. But realities uh, which have no material pictorial form cannot, of course, be artistically reproduced, copied, or photographed. Uh, this is from uh, Leavitt's book 1, section 9, and I have put artistically in quotation mark because it's not, uh, it's only uh, in the Dan Swedish and Danish uh, uh, editions that uh, in the English, that only uh, it's only uh, uh, stands be reproduced, but not artistically. I don't know why, uh, but I thought it was uh, important. Uh, I find it interesting <coughs> that some of the abstract painters, like Vesely Kandinsky and Hilma of Klint also expressed spiritu a spiritual ambition with their art. And um, this is a, a, a book that uh, <coughs> Kandinsky wrote uh, called the spiritual, the spiritual in Art. This is the German edition, uh, old German edition über das Geistige in der Kunst. In this book, he formulated the opinion that on art as an inner constraint for the artist to find a spiritual art form. He meant by that that the property of form in the artwork was to express the artist's innermost feelings and anti-materialistic values and thereby to create a true spiritual reality. Uh, this is Hilma of Klint sitting in, his, in her uh, studio. Uh, Hilma of Klint is a Swedish painter who spent a great deal of her time to create art through canalizations uh, from what she considered a higher plane of consciousness. Uh, among her paintings we find pieces which are strikingly similar to some of, of Martinez's symbols. However, in contrast to Martinez, who was aware of what he wanted to visualize, uh, in his symbols. Hilma strived 
all her life trying to understand the, messing, the meaning in her artwork. Uh, <coughs> in connection with, with making a, a documentary uh, on Hilma of Clint, I even think they found a copy of uh, the first volume of Leavitt's book, The Book of Life, in her belongings. And this documentary uh, by Helena Dushka, one can see a glimpse of one of Martinez's symbols. I don't know if you were here 2019, uh, but then they showed this documentary here at the center. So maybe some of you have, have seen this uh, film. It's interesting uh, that uh, th th one of this symbol that I don't remember which one it was, but it just glimpses uh, between all Hilma's pictures. So one cannot know if it's Hilma's picture, or, but it, it really was a Martinez symbol. Yes, here is <coughs> two pictures, one of by Hilma of Clint and one by Martinez. And in the painting to the left from 1907 uh, by Hilma of Clint is called Altar Bild Nummer 1, or Altar Picture Number 1. Of course, we see a similar triangular form as in Martinez symbol number 6, the living being. One. In both cases, there is a small, there are a small triangle at the top and fields of color branching out downward. We also see a circle with beams uh, in both images, although located differently. Uh, so throughout Hilma of Clint's extensive notes on her paintings, we can in anticipate that this picture illustrates spiritual evolution. Yet she never uh, really knew how to interpret many of her pictures. She tried, among other things, to get help from Rudolf Steiner, the founder of anthropology. Anthroposophy, <laughs> anthroposophy. Okay, uh, <coughs> to interpret this and other paintings, but uh, he wouldn't, couldn't help her. Here is another quote by Martinus. <coughs> Thus, by forming symbols for the cosmic realities which all constitute a world invisible to the physical and low psychic senses of human beings. We enable the researcher by acquainting himself with these physical markings of the invisible realities in, form, in the form of symbols, to work with them in the same way as he is used to work with the accessible physical objects or phenomena with his physical senses. And uh, I think the, the slide where I had the map would, would fit better in to this uh, um, quote. But, uh, okay. Uh, speaking some about uh, the process of, of uh, Martinez's process when, when painting his symbols. We can although say that although it not being art in the general sense, we can look specifically at his creative process uh, and uh, then we can find clear similarities with long term, the long term trying approach to find the right final expression so familiar to visual artists in general. And uh, also when considering his finished symbols, we can see some similarities to art 
in an abstract sense, especially when comparing with, as we did with artists with spiritual ambitions, as for example here Marv Klint's paintings, which inspired inspires to meditation on spiritual matters, just like Martinez symbols do. Okay, uh, I will now say a little something about the relationships to the classic spiritual symbols. Uh, <coughs> we can find attempts to illustrate the divine and cosmic through the entire human history. And um, if we begin with a cross, uh, we know it's a well-known marker within Christianity, symbolizing the notion of Christ's uh, crucifixion as a salvation from the presumed hereditary sin. To Buddhists, the wheel symbolizes reincarnation, which is something they strive to free themselves from. The yin and yang uh, of Taoism uh, designates the core forces of the universe, showing that in one extreme lies the seed to the other extreme. If we look uh, a little deeper uh, on the cross uh, and uh, related to what Martinus say about the cross, so he, we can see that he widens the perspective, uh, viewing it as a mirror of the highest structure of the universe. Uh, and he states that the transverse and vertical beam in the cross represents the matter side and the life side, respectively. So it's also a symbol of a high capacity, he says, in both the physical and the spiritual experience, representing the highest light in consciousness, which he also, uh, according to Martinus, uh, uh, that Jesus uh, had this uh, in his mission uh, on earth, uh, this uh, cosmic consciousness. Concerning reincarnation and karma, uh, it's, it's, according to Martinus, important basic cosmic cycles, uh, which is not recognized in, in Christianity and Islam, but well within Buddhism and Hinduism. I took the liberty to use one of my own drawings as an illustration here. Um, so he interpret, interprets both reincarnation and karma in a quite uh, different way compared to the traditional Eastern dogmatic interpretations of these principles. Uh, we can say that if looking at an aver average Hindu interpretation of reincarnation. Uh, they view it as a soul migration, where a life with uh, bad behavior might result in the punishment of being born as, for example, a frog. Uh, and according to Martinus, uh, uh, life always develops from a lower to a higher state of consciousness, and uh, it is impossible to reincarnate downward into an animal. And concerning karma, uh, this is according to Martinus not a punishment, but a divine teaching made possible by the eternal principle of energy always returning to its source.
yin and yang. <clears throat> yes, we can, I think, throughout Martinus's symbols recognize this principle uh, as he in many symbols uh, deepens how all energy and movement repeatedly travels in spiral cycles from darkness to light, from ignorance to wisdom, from egoism to love, etc. Uh, in this uh, symbol number 13, the eternal world plan, we can see how the culmination of darkness evolves into a culmination in light and in an eternal spiral movement. And we can also see that a streak of light remains when it's at the darkest. And also that the stream of, of darkness remains at, at the culmination of, of, of light. And uh, you can see that, uh, I think, corresponds to the dots uh, of darkness and light in the yin and yang symbol. <coughs> and of course the triangle uh, centered within a star it's the core of Martinus course itself. He uses consistently the triangle to symbolize all there is, you can say. That is through recognizing everything as living beings. The Godhead as well as the included life units or sons of God. This, as they all represent a triune structure with an I, X1, an ability to create and experience X2, and a created world and organism, X3. We can see this clearly illustrated in the symbol of the triune principle and also integrated in symbol number 11, the eternal world picture. Uh, originally, the triangle was an ancient Egyptian, uh, I, maybe I should say on earth, because I think this is a universal symbol. But on earth, the triangle was an ancient originally an Egyptian symbol, adopted by Christianity and later Freemasonry, Freemasonry uh, symbolizing the all-seeing God in the Holy Trinity. Uh, this is a picture from, I think, an, a Catholic uh, uh, cathedral or, or church. Today, this symbol <coughs> might also be interconnected with the so-called Illuminati, a notion of a secret world administration run by a small group of people with great power ruling the world and the paths of its development. This is the symbol uh, that they refer to, and uh, I think it corresponds uh, to this fear in some people today of a presumed international hidden elite which is said to be on a successful endeavor to enslave the whole humanity through a global dictatorial new world order. Uh, and this is said to be predicted on American dollar bills which has this symbol. You can see that on the bills. Uh, I will not go into this uh, today, but I think it would be very interesting some time to, to, for another presentation to compare this notion 
with uh, Martinus view of a new world order which uh, is about the coming global kingdom of love. The spiral uh, is also a, a <coughs> an important uh, esoteric or spiritual sy symbol. And in our time, some philosophers talk about a sacred geometry in which the spiral is an abundant fractal form, uh, nature's own divine mathematics, you can say. And we can see some examples here, a fern, a snail shell, and a spiral galaxy. So we see this form throughout the, the microcosmos, the, the, the mesocosmos, and the macrocosmos. <coughs> uh, within esotericism uh, and the mystic traditions, uh, the spiral is used to symbolize the essence and generative principle of life. Uh, and Martinus confirms, I think, the cosmic significance of the spiral structure uh, as a universal spiritual principle through many of his symbols. For example, these ones. Yes, uh, I see that uh, uh, the time, the clock is not so much, but this uh, presentation is a bit shorter than uh, they used to be. So I, I will go into a summary uh, now. Uh, so you can say that in Martinez's symbols, uh, we can discover an aesthetic image world, uh, not being art in the current meaning of the concept. Uh, but the unique quality of the symbols could be described as expressing a consequent logic, systematics, and uh, a mathematical precision. Uh, we stand before nothing uh, less, I think, than an artist uh, that had the capacity to give a concentrated view, a uh, visual overview, over uh, the cosmic structure of the entire universe. Uh, who else can do that? <laughs> uh, so, ultimately, the work of Martinus appears as a gift of love uh, to huma humanity in times where nothing is more urgent than trying to find answers to the big questions of how everything fits in with a higher order. Thank you. Uh, as I have a little more time, I will uh, try to say something about uh, <coughs> the film we are going to show here uh, at nine o'clock. It's a, a series on... It's uh, 14 uh, different artists who all is connected to Martini. Okay. Ja, yeah, nu no prøver jeg igen. Fungerer det nu da? Ja. Yeah. Jo, jeg så det, at jeg skal lov... Uh, Nej, jeg skal ikke alt. <laughs> yes, in English. Uh, at 9 o'clock there will be uh, shown a, a little film, 20 minutes long, about uh, 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 with music. It's, uh, I think, a meditation with uh, 14 different uh, artists. 
uh, who work in different um, medias and uh, have different expressions, all have an interest in Martinez's uh, analysis. And uh, I think that might be a good thing to, to look at uh, and uh, have a little bit meditative uh, uh, and student of. I can't find the world. Uh, <laughs> it's. I think it's. It's meditative. So. So. Uh, you can I can recommend it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>